Why are new dog owners always so eager to take their dogs for long walks before the training or getting them off leash at the park before they're ready for it? Why is that the immediate goal? What if I told you that you're actually setting your dog back and creating worse behaviors by going outside? In today's video, I'm going to show you three skills that you can work on and master inside so that you can take your dog outside and transform your training. I'm Ken Steep and welcome back to McCann Dogs. The first skill you're going to learn is called targeting. Targeting is having your dog choose to focus their attention both mentally and physically on something that you choose in the face of distraction. Now this can be a really useful skill to teach when you're outside and a skateboard goes by or there's a squirrel up in a tree or you just simply need your dog to check back in and leave all of the other distractions behind. Instructor Kale is going to show you how to break down this skill and teach it to your dog with her puppy. Five alive. Now there are a couple different ways that you can teach this, but I'm going to show you guys a really simple and fast way, especially if you have a really keen dog that likes the food. Now I have a bunch of small treats in one hand here. I'm going to take one and I'm just going to pinch it between two fingers so that my hand can be flat because this is going to be the hand cue I'm going to use later. Now I'm not going to worry about saying any words. I'm literally going to present my hand to five and naturally he's going to smell the treat in my hand. And when he touches my hand, yes, to get the treat from it, I'm going to mark that with a yes. I'll show you again, simply putting it in front of his face. Yes, good boy. And letting him steal the food. And you're going to repeat this step. Yes, good boy. Many times. So I'm yesing as soon as I feel him. Yes. Make contact with my hand. So once I've done a bunch of repetitions of offering my hand with the food in it, the next step is teaching him to do this a little bit more independently. Now he's going to assume there's going to be a treat in my hand, except this time I'm going to pull a fast one on him and I'm not going to put any food there. However, I need to be ready to quickly reward him before he has a chance to think about other things. So if he touches my his nose to my hand on this one, I'm going to say yes and I'm going to quickly deliver the food. I know you're excited. I'm going to quickly deliver the food to my tap hand to make sure the value stays here. So I know I'm holding food in this hand, but I don't want him to do an exercise with this hand and then me feed him with the opposite hand. It's going to make him think about paying attention over here. So it's going to look something like this. Yes, good boy. Yes, good boy. Yes, good. So do you see how I mark the moment I feel him touch my hand? I say yes and then reward. Now, I have done this a little bit with five before, so he is touching pretty easily, but there are some dogs that you might present your hand, they'll smell your hand from a distance and say, I don't see any treat there, I don't smell any treat there. So you might have to do more repetitions of going back to putting the food in your hand. So if you try this and you're, yes, good boy, and your puppy doesn't, not, or your dog doesn't touch your hand immediately, don't worry about it. It just means you need to put a little bit more money in the bank. You need to go back a few more repetitions of actually putting a physical piece of food, yes, good boy, in your hand to build a little bit more value. But the name of the game here is you touch, yes, my hand, I'm gonna give you a reward. Five is starting to get the idea that he should tap his nose to my hand, which is great, but there's two progressions I want to make before I can start to utilize this in situations where it's going to be helpful. Number one, I need to put it on a cue, so some type of command. And number two, I need to make sure that he can touch my hand regardless of where I put it so that I can use it in different circumstances to either refocus him or to get him a little bit closer to me. So I'm going to start off by just offering my hand in a few different places and see if he can seek it out. Again, I'm not going to add a word quite yet. I'm just going to do one step at a time. Yes, good boy. I might try it over here. Yes, good. Oops, freebie. Yes, good boy. Yes, good. Yes, good boy. Here's a hard one. Yes, oh, good. Okay, so he didn't offer, so I'm going to try it again. Yes. Good boy, very good. So try practicing in different um, positions to ensure that your dog understands that the behavior is gonna earn a reward. And then once you do that, you're ready to add a command. Adding a cue to this exercise is extremely easy provided your dog is offering the behavior very, uh, very quickly and reliably. All you're going to do is just before they're about to touch your hand, you're going to throw in the command that you're looking for to play a little word association. So I'm pretty confident that when I flash my hand, he's going to touch it. So watch the timing of when I give my cue. Tap. Yes. Good boy. Tap. Yes. Good boy. Do you see how I throw it in there just before he does the behavior? Tap. Yes. Good boy. Tap, yes, good boy. So my timing of the yes is still the same. Once I've done that a few times, then I can put it all together. Tap, yes, good boy. Now, I just did something wrong. 
Maybe I shouldn't tell you what it is. Maybe you should go back and try and figure out what it is and post in the comments below. I just, I don't even wanna give it away. You tell me what I just messed up. Now I'm gonna do it correct. Tap, yes, good boy. This next skill is really helpful for teaching your dog a little bit of listening and control exercises. And it's actually something that we call the game of tug. Now, you may have heard all kinds of things about playing tug with your dog. And I'll tell you, probably most of those things aren't true. In this next clip, we're gonna show you how to make your game of tug a little bit better with this high energy lab named Kilani. I'm gonna have her choose to hold a sit before she gets the toy. You can see she likes this toy and she's also very typical Labrador, jumpy, bouncy, super friendly and outgoing. But when I ask for that toy back, if she doesn't give it to me, we are going to have her sit. So I'm gonna do a little food trade for this. Good girly, good job, hooray. Good, good, Out. good sit, good girl, good job. Yes, good sit, good. Now she's making a great choice right now. She is nice and stable in this. So how am I gonna reward this? I'm gonna give her this toy back. Okay, get it, good girl, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. Good girl, get it, get it, get it, out. Sit. Good sit. Good girl. Good. Yes, get it. Good girl. Good. So, first time she sat, she was quite stable. So, I upped my game a little bit. I made the toy a little bit more interesting. Out. Sit. Sit. Good sit. Good job, miss. Very nice. I'm going to make it a little harder. Good sit. Good. Yes, get it. Good girl. Get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. Now, I want her to actually commit to this sit. I don't want her vibrating and, and half jumping. I want her sitting solidly. Out. Sit. Yes. Good girl. Good sit. What a good girl you are. Good job. Yes, okay, get it. Good girl. Yay, good girl. Hooray, what a good girl. Excellent job. Good, hooray. You're so exciting. Good. Okay, out. Sit. Oh, we got tangled up in the leash. Good girl. Good job. Now, I took a long, dramatic pause there, but I wanted to see what Kalani would do. I was waiting to see if she would look away from that toy and look at me, and her eyes came up to me. That's the moment I said yes, and that's the moment she was allowed to have the toy back. So she's starting to pair together to look at me to get the reward. Good girl, miss. If you're still working on having your dog give up a toy or still hold a sit in the face of it, then I would make this easier. Um, I would work on the tug and out separate with the toy. And I would also work on sit. Sit means sit for my dogs or any dog I work with. And it means sit until I ask you to do something else. If they happen to get up out of the sit, I'm gonna place them back in. But if my dog can't hold a sit in the face of the distraction, I need to work on the sit first, which is another skill you can do that helps with focus. When it comes to the idea of rewarding these choices, it's imperative that the thing that you're going to reward with is more valuable than the thing that they are trying to get to. We want dogs to understand where the value is, and that means being able to overcome value elsewhere and make sure that you're the most important thing. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is all of you is a reward. You'll notice when I was tugging with her, I was exciting, I was engaging, I was talking to her in a nice way. I was really exciting, but the moment I want to be, uh, have a little bit more calm from her, I calm myself down. So it's not just the food, it's not just the toy, but it's all those things, including you. If you're interested in getting a fuzzy ball tug like the one we just used in the last clip, make sure you check out McCandogs.store. Something that dog trainers do with their puppies that a lot of average dog owners wouldn't know to do is something called shaping. Essentially, shaping is having the dog choose a behavior and then we're rewarding them for making the right choice. This is a great way to teach your dog to problem solve and down the road, this is going to be a very useful skill for your dog to have. Check out this next clip where Kale works with a mixed breed dog named Lucy and she shapes Lucy to get all four paws into a cardboard box. I have a box here and my goal is that I can train Lucy to get inside the box. So I'm going to start off by just having a little a couple of pieces of food ready here, which you can see she's super excited about. I'm going to have my box nearby. Yes, good girl. And then anything that Lucy has to do with the box, yes, good girl. I'm going to yes and reward her for sniffing. Yes, putting her head close to the box, putting a paw in. Yes, oh yes, good girl. Now every time she gets closer to my final goal, I'm going to increase the uh, rate of reward. Yes. Good girls, we got two little paws there. Yes, good girl. Now what's super important for this one, okay, she's gonna have a reset for a second, come here, what's this? What's really important for this one is when you say the word yes, you need to make sure that when you, yes, 
When you say yes, it's exactly at the point that you're trying to reinforce. Good girl, yes. Now, she is starting to offer two paws pretty easily, so I'm gonna go for the gusto here, and I'm gonna wait for her to do a little bit more before she gets any more rewards. Try again. So isn't this interesting? I'm getting a few different behaviors. She's actually offering to bow now. So I'm gonna reward her for that because I don't want her to get frustrated. And what I'm gonna do now is help her out a little bit. Two feet, good. I'm just gonna lure her so that, yes, yes! Oh, we got back feet and the front feet came out. Yay, good girl! But this is sort of the fun thing about shaping. You don't have to, you know, get the dog to climb the mountain in order to get the reward. I'm just gonna reward all the little increments along the way. Yes, good girl. Yes. Yes, there we go, good. And now I'm gonna use the food to try and get these back feet in. Yes, good, yes. Good girl, yes. Three for four in about a couple minutes. That's pretty good, Lulu. Okay, let's try one more. Yes, good girl. You see how she's offering to go in the box without me even asking? Dogs learn through positive reinforcement. So if they get reinforced for something, they're much more likely to offer it again. Yes, good girl. Let's try and get that third foot again. Yes. Oh my goodness, jackpot! And once you get that final goal, what a good girl! You want to really reward generously. Wow, Luz, that was so good! Now let's talk about a few challenges that you might have while you're training this exercise. Now number one, sometimes if you just put a box down and just stand there, <laughs> good girl, Luz, a lot of dogs, and initially what she would have done is just stood there and stared at the box, and you don't just want to be having a staring contest for too long with your dog. Shaping is about creativity and offering behavior, so make sure that you help your dog to do a little bit more guessing. You know, when I first brought the box into the room, Lucy was a little bit unsure about it, so I actually started off by just throwing a couple treats into the box, just to get her to investigate, to sniff it a little bit, um, just to build her confidence about it. But don't let your dog stall out for too long without offering something. Step in and make it a little bit easier so you can keep the pace moving along with your dog. It is so funny. The other thing that's important to note too is what you use for your shaping exercise. I picked a box that is Lucy size. Hey Missy. Um, it's big enough that she can easily get inside. It's not too high. It's not too intimidating. Yes, good girl. <laughs> You're so funny. Well, now that she knows it's good, she just wants to keep doing it. Um, so you want to use a box that's properly sized for your dog to make sure it's really easy to get into. Make sure it's stable and it's not going to tip around or slide on practicing on a carpet to give it a little bit more friction. Um, and those are things that are just going to help your training session go a little bit more smoothly so you're spending more time rewarding your dog and building their confidence. Now that you can see the value of training your dog indoors, Check out this video that talks about three exercises that tire your dog out without walking. On that note, happy training.